Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest involvement. This podcast was created for moments like this, moments where we need community more than ever before, moments where we feel lost and confused and uncertain and overwhelmed and even afraid. I think all of us have expressed and experienced all of these emotions at some time, in the past week. I know I have. And I really have been stepping up. You know, a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do with my time. I'm like, yo, we ride at dawn. (laughs) Like I'm in this, I'm in this to support in the highest way than I ever have before through extra podcast episodes like this, through my daily IG lives where I facilitate dance experiences with you connecting you to your body in the time where it is needed the most, extra workshops in rose gold goddesses, meditations, everything I can in my power to give you more love, more intuitive insight, more inspiration at this time where we need it the most. I am here to provide that. And I really invite you to think of what is your medicine that you'd like to share right now? This is the time where we really show up. This is the time that we turn our lights all the way up. Like we need us sun workers right now to be shining real bright. So think about what is it that you can contribute at this time? Can you do a meditation on your Instagram live? Can you call some friends and see how they're doing? Can you volunteer on the suicide hotline? Can you write some notes under your elderly neighbor's doors and ask them if they need anything? Can you pick up groceries for people at need? This is the time that we really show up. Everything else is practice for these moments. You know, we don't meditate to become a good meditator. We meditate so we can become better people. So we can show up at times like this where we are needed the most, where we heal our spiritual beings are needed on the front line. So please don't take this as a time to just veg out and disconnect. You might need to for a couple of days, maybe to get yourself, you know, into a self-soothed mood, but after really show up. And I think the biggest way to get ourselves into that state is through connecting to our bodies again, connecting to our body wisdom. So I am on Instagram live every single day doing a dance activation with you. Two days ago, we did a shamanic dance activation. Today, we did one that was a manifestation dance journey with a twerk shop. Tomorrow, I will be joining with one of my friends. I'm going to be on Thursday coming back. So reggaeton. I'm, I'm, every day, I'm going to bring something to the table so we can dance together. So I invite you to join me. My Instagram is at I am Sahara Rose. I can't wait to twerk with you. I can't wait to get this party started. So I'm here to bring in the light. That's what I do. And there are other people with different dharmas. And one of my dear friends, Dr. Jess MD, Dr. Jess Petros, if you're not familiar with her, she's been on the podcast before about a year ago, is an incredible medical doctor turned functional naturopathic type of doctor. She you know, has had an incredible spiritual awakening at a time that she was completely asleep living in Kentucky and realized that health is so much more than the physical. So I brought her on the podcast to talk all things of what this virus really is. I think there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of uncertainty. So this is a podcast that we just talk about the science of it. We talk about what's really happening. What is COVID-19? What are the symptoms? How is it spread? What should we be doing right now? And then also how important it is to get out of the fear because the fear is really what is making us most sick. You know, COVID-19 is real. The virus is real. And do you know what's affecting 7 billion people right now that is also very real and very harmful to 7 billion people, not tens of thousands of people, 7 billion people. That's fear. And fear, my friends, is just as contagious. So it is important for us to not give into the fear. Yes, be precautious. Yes, self-quarantine. I've been self-quarantining all week. It's been great. I've been creating so much more content for you guys. It's been awesome and really showing up, bonus episodes, everything I can do. So self-quarantine doesn't mean you check out, but it means that you take care of other people. 
And I really want to stress the importance of this because a lot of us think, oh, well, I'm healthy, so I don't need to, you know, self-quarantine because I have a strong immune system. It's not about you. It's about the fact that you could be a carrier that another person that doesn't have a strong of an immune system will end up being the one that suffers, you know? So we want to make sure that we do our parts as conscious citizens to not allow this virus to continue to spread. So even if you feel like you never get sick, you're not afraid of anything, whatever your story is, it's great. And there are other people who are immunosuppressed, immunocompromised, who are elders, who are unhealthy. And it really bothers me. I feel like a lot of spiritual people right now, I see them trying to act like, oh, this coronavirus. I actually heard one that said coronavirus is like sweeping away the low conscious people. Like, no. That is not true. Some people were born with different levels of health, different immune systems, and it doesn't make them less conscious. If you think that, then that just shows your own level of consciousness. This is here for us to ground. This is here for us to connect. This is here for us to go yin. When else in the history of time has every single Apple store, every single, you know, big factory, et cetera, been closed at the exact same time? This has really never happened in history. This is history in the making. It's interesting because every hundred years, there's a big virus that goes around like this. There's like the bubonic plague about a hundred years ago. If you look this up, every every hundred years, there's a big virus like this. I don't know if it's spirit that's doing this. I don't know what is happening, but it reminds me that we're not alone. This isn't the first time that we've ever dealt with a virus. And if you look at what has come out of it before, you know, Shakespeare wrote one of his most incredible sonnets during the time of a plague that was happening at his moment of incarnation. Isaac Newton created the law of gravity at the time of a great virus that was going around in his time. So what are we going to do with this experience? So we can be educated, we can prep, we can be conscious individuals with Without having the fear. And I know it's easier said than done. It, it's like hard to be prepping food and not be like afraid at the same time. I get it. You're human. I was too, especially when the news first really hit me. I was like, oh shit. But then I came back to love. I anchored back into love and I, it doesn't make me afraid of also knowing the science and the data. I think we have to have one foot in the 3D, which is the physical world, and one foot in the 5D, which is the spiritual world. And this is really how we walk forward as leaders of the new paradigm. So I brought Dr. Jess on to talk all things health, all things viral related, just keeping you really informed from a doctor that I really trust and someone who isn't fear-based, someone who really understands consciousness and understands the light to give you, you know, the best information possible, the best information that we know at this time, I'm sure we're going to continue to learn more. As I said, there are many different theories out there. There are many different perspectives, but we really try to stay with the facts that we know and we recognize right now. So you could just be educated of what's happening and really understand the importance of self-quarantining at this time. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Jess Petras to the Highest Self Podcast. Are you that person that all your friends and family members come to when they need wellness advice? Are you constantly looking up new ways to heal and balance your mind, body, and spirit, including listening to this podcast? Well, have you ever considered having a career becoming a holistic health coach where you get to decide your own hours, work with people, tackling the subjects that you are the most passionate about, and having financial freedom along the way? Well, I'm so excited to be teaming up with my very own Alma Mater Institute for Integrative Nutrition to offer their biggest discount yet. You'll receive $2,000. $250 off tuition, an extra bonus that they're offering just with my highest self podcast listeners on how to launch your dream book. This course is going to get you super clear on what your book is about and how to bring it out into the world. I've created a webinar for you on how to have a thriving business as a health coach. So using social media, creating passive income, how to have a wait list of clients and become the best known coach in your niche with raving testimonials. Tickets to a live upcoming IIN conference where I will be meeting you over there. Super excited to connect and a bundle of all digital wellness guides like Ayurveda, self-love, whole food eating, etc. So all you have to do is head over to my show notes. You'll see the link over there. It's a little bitly link. It'll take you right there. You'll be able to receive a 
sample class, check out the curriculum, get all your questions answered. And I'm so excited to have you on this mission, raising the vibration of the planet together as a health coach. Again, head over to my show notes. You'll see the link right there and I'll see you inside. Welcome Jess to the Highest Self Podcast. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Uh, And the first question I'd love to ask you is what makes you your highest self? Honestly, finding peace of mind every day, just taking a moment to pause and not run around like a chicken with my head cut off and find my center that way, which I can say I haven't always done for most of my life. Mm, Beautiful. And right now we are needing it more than ever before. So we are in the middle of COVID-19. I think it's gone way further further than we ever anticipated. I remember a couple of weeks ago, my parents calling me being like, we don't feel safe. You're going to Bali. And I was like, you're so fear-based. And now it's here. And I think people are confused. Like what is really happening to the body? Like how quote unquote afraid, how much of a risk is this for us? So you are like my go-to source for all medical inspiration, information, everything. And what I love about your work is you really, you are a Western trained medical doctor, but you're extremely holistic and natural and body-based and and conscious. And guys, she was on the podcast before. I'll post the link in the show notes, but she had a full-on Kundalini awakening, super spiritual. We've hosted retreats together. We've known each other for like five years. So like she is your girl. Like there is no one I would bring above Dr. Jess to share this topic with my listeners. So we are just so grateful to have you. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. That What a beautiful introduction. I'm I'm really honored, honestly, that you came to me during such a a crazy emergent time. It feels like a full of um, mass hysteria just, um, and really I was the same as you. I, I, same as you, Sahara, I was like, this is fear-based, you know, this is, if you even look back at some of my posts on Instagram, I was talking about, you know, this is the media producing a bunch of mass hysteria. And just like you said, who would have ever thought that here we are talking about, you know, a pandemic really. Mm -hmm. So I'm really honored to be here and talk to you about everything and dive right in. Okay. So I think the biggest question right now is how does this thing spread? Is it by touch? Is it by air? We keep hearing conflicting information. How is this thing spreading? Absolutely. So as far as we know, it's aerosolized, which means it is spread through coughing, respiratory droplets. Um, We also know that it can withstand a certain length of time on certain substances and plastics. It can last up to a week, almost nine days. Some of the research has shown. So even like an Amazon package? Ooh, that's a good question. Possibly. Because that's what I'm thinking. Are they going to shut down mm-hmm. Amazon? Possibly. You know, there is research to indicate that it can last on substances. Obviously, cleaning things removes the virus, doesn't necessarily kill it or deactivate it, removes how much there is. So that's what people need to keep in mind is that it, it can stay on certain substances. It is passed in the air and respiratory droplets, and it's, it's pretty contagious from what we see so far. So how do you compare this to the flu? We keep hearing, you know, more people are dying from the flu at this time still. How is the like contagiousness related? So that's a good question. The flu is more contagious as far as we know so far. And, you know, this is more comparable to something like Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS or SARS. And those had a much higher fatality rate than Corona is showing right now. The flu actually kills people not just by being the flu, but in a lot of people it turns into a lower lobe pneumonia, which is eventually what kills people. And this is what's similar to this virus. And it's not just the flu though, it is a viral pneumonia and it likes to attack the lower lobes of the lungs. And so really that's what's different a little bit about the flu. Not everybody's flu turns into a pneumonia. And this one can turn into ammonia in very immunocompromised or certain individuals with certain comorbidities or pre-existing conditions. Mm, Got it. So Mm -hmm. tell us what are the actual symptoms? What are the early tail symptoms? What should we be looking out for? You know, they didn't report a lot about this in the media, but it is important to note that there are some gastrointestinal symptoms and it can cause a lot of sticky, thick mucus, which can affect not only our respiratory system and lungs, but it can affect our GI tract as well. We've even seen some people with liver damage in the older community and really everyone presents with a fever, no runny nose, fever, cough. Um, malaise. A lot of people have just said that it can resemble almost like a food poisoning too. So it often can present as a multi-organ failure because of the acute inflammation it produces in the body. 
Mm, that's so interesting because Organic Olivia, who's a mutual friend of ours, mm -hmm. parents both have it. And she was sharing that one of their early stage symptoms were these gastrointestinal problems and how ah. people aren't talking about it. But they were complaining the week before about having really bad stomach issues. And a lot of Chinese scientists are also talking about that. But for some reason in our media, we're not talking about it. I have a feeling it's because most people just have digestive issues. So maybe they... <laughs> Maybe they don't want to scare people. Like a friend of mine was like, oh my God, I have a stomach ache. Like, is it, is it this? I'm like, no, it could be all the stress. It could be so many things. So we're not trying to say like, if you have a stomach ache, it's this, but right. it is like one of the pieces of the puzzle. Exactly. And it can affect a lot of the mucous membranes and certain organs and a lot of the organs that has an affinity for things like the kidneys, the lungs, the liver, blood vessels, things like that. And so when you think about the people that it's affecting, it is a lot of people who have pre-existing conditions that affect those organs too. So that's one way I want people, if you're healthy, you don't have a lot of cardiovascular disease, you don't have pre-existing condition like diabetes, a lot of inflammatory conditions, then this you, it doesn't put you in the high risk category as much. Okay. So that's what a lot of us were thinking, especially a week ago, you know, when we were still like feeling a little bit invincible around it, it was like, well, if I'm young and I'm not going to get sick, then I'm not going to, you know, give into the fear. I'm going to continue living our lives. And now we're seeing how we could actually be carriers of that. So can you talk about that and the importance really of social distancing right now? Exactly. So this virus is tricky. And what's tricky about it is that it has a very long incubation period, almost up to two weeks is what they're saying right now. And that means that when it's incubating, you don't have symptoms. You're pretty asymptomatic, but you're still a carrier that can pass on. You're still contagious, even though you don't show anything else. And that's a really long incubation period. So there's that's how it was able to travel internationally across the country. And we even think it may have been here in the United States here for a couple months and not been a very virulent strain. It's been very mild for a lot of young people who just thought it was a cold or upper respiratory infection. So that's how this virus is pretty tricky. And that's what they're hoping that everyone will honor is social distancing just because you don't know what you've come in contact with and, and what's to come. Mm. So now just today, they declared that in LA, New York, I'm not sure what other cities right now, there is a quarantine that's happening that you can't go to any public place. For now, restaurants are still open. You can order takeout from them. But I know, for example, on Postmates, there's a new like your deliverer leaves it behind the door. So there's no actual like contact with them. So do you think two weeks of this and the problem will be gone? Like, what is the real solution? Oh, man. You know, it's, it's hard to know at this point. There's approximately a little over 2,500 cases right now in the United States, I believe. And so, you know, 300 here or so in California, over 300, almost 400 in New York alone. And so it's hard to know when the peak of the bell curve is going to happen, if you will, on this virus. It really depends on the health state of the nation, to be honest with you, how well we can keep it out of places like nursing homes and, you know, really immunocompromised places like, um, you know, cancer, cancer treatment centers or hospitals. Those people really need protection, right? And anyone who has, you know, a bunch of autoimmunity or pre-existing conditions that have a lot of, a lot of inflammatory response or react, really have an overreactive immune system, that seems to be the pathogenesis of this virus is that it really elicits an immune response and a lot of inflammation. So if these people are already high risk and then you throw this virus on there with extra inflammation, it's the immune system that gets revved up and actually can do us harm when it's overzealous. Mm, so I think what they're hoping for is that in two weeks, kind of everyone that has it will show symptoms. And then by then, like, you know, it's hard. Do you think two weeks is enough time for those people to be able to show symptoms so we can then treat those people? I think so. You know, that's what the literature has shown. There's been a number of studies that show the incubation period is about approximately 14 days. So I think that they're having high hopes here with this and they're being a little, you know, I think it's inciting a lot of fear in the population, but really they're just being protective about this right now because they're hoping, I don't know if it can be a complete shutdown, but they're really hoping to kind of curb how much the how much how much the virus passes from person to person at this time? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I know different countries have had like China has had a very you know strong approach towards their quarantine, but from what I understand now, they're pretty much done with it. Yeah. But 
I don't know how the American public will respond. I mean, even just thinking about like how much of a shock it was, but then we accept it, right? We, we keep, and that's so, so beautiful about human nature is almost like, you know, something bad happens. We're like, oh shit, why is this happening to me? We freak out. And then we're like, okay, let's keep moving forward. I remember when someone even mentioned to me, like there's going to be a quarantine a week ago, I was like triggered. I was like, they're fear-based. I was like mad at this person for telling me because it was so much for me to even comprehend. And now I'm like, 14 days, 30 days, I'm ready for it. Let's go. <laughs> Activating as long as there's internet, I'm good. You know? <laughs> Same. Can I watch documentaries and Netflix? I'm okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, let's hope for the best with this. Yeah. So I want to talk about the fear that's really, you know, so prevalent. I think that this is in our lifetimes so far, the yes. the craziest thing that's really ever happened. And, and I f- so feel for the people who are in so much fear right now. Do you think the fear is really matching what this virus is? I don't, honestly. I mean, the, a lot of the media hypes everything up. It is scary to know what an incubation period is. But honestly, I feel like this virus has been in the United States for a couple months already. And we have abysmal testing techniques. So really, you know, if you can't test for it, we don't know what exactly is the coronavirus or isn't at this point. And we just don't have enough testing to go around. So I think it's been here for a while. And I think that really people who have are seriously immunocompromised, have a lot of different hypertension, diabetes, autoimmunity, cancer. They may be the most at risk, just like with the flu. But honestly, the coronavirus fatality rate is around 3% on average right now. And that's much less than MERS and SARS. So it seems to be every decade we have this new sort of new virus, novel virus that comes out. And it's a lot of fear every time. Mm. So how do you think we can cope with, you know, the fear and the panic that's really happening? So many people tell us, don't be afraid, don't stress, but it's kind of hard to be like stocking up on food for an <laughs> unknown amount of time and, and not be stressed. So how can we alleviate that? Good point. You know, and the fear is real. You go out to the grocery stores and the shelves are barren, you know, so I understand it, how, why, why people are kind of freaking out about that. I, you know, it is stressful, but keep in mind that just because you're preparing doesn't mean that anything terrible is going to happen. It's not going to be the zombie apocalypse, right? It's just being prepared. And this is just a mandatory two week shutdown right now. I, I think things will get better after this, but no one knows. So I think keeping, you know, re- taking deep breaths, keeping centered in yourself, taking a moment to pause and be grateful every day, really keep your immune system in check. You know, there are a lot of things that you can do preemptively and lifestyle changes that you can make that overall really raise your immunity. And if you haven't already started that, I really encourage everyone to do that now. Mm, Yeah. I mean, I think it's the break that we've been waiting for. You know, we keep talking about that. We want more time at home. We want more time to chill. We want to watch those courses we signed up for, read the book or paint or whatever it is, dance. And now we're gifted this beautiful opportunity to do it. Like, I think we have to shift our mindset around, like, I have to stay home to, I get to stay home. I love that. (laughs) We get to be on a staycation right now. We get to be on our own personalized home retreats where we get to do whatever we want. You know, you can take a bath if you want. You can do a face mask. You can like, you know, make some cool black bean brownies, you know, that are shelf stable. Like there's so many, there's so many things that we can do when we're at home. But I think that it's so interesting because now that we, you know, get to be at home, we're wishing, oh, I want to go out to like the bar. I want to go out to the restaurant. I want to go out to the club and all these places that we don't even want to really go, you know? And then when we're there, we're wishing we could be home. So it's really just this like human complex of like wanting to be somewhere that we're not. Exactly. Well, grass is always greener, right? I mean, it's sort of like the human human nature. If you're not aware of your thoughts and what you're what you're going towards, that, that that's how everything is. The grass is greener. You know, that's a great point. I love what you said. I mean, I want to take this opportunity to have this staycation. I need it. I think there's a bunch of us don't know how pinged in fly or fight we are all the time, how much that can imbalance the system, even your immune system. And we don't even know because as a, especially as Americans, we're go, 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 go constantly. 
it's looked at as the norm. And I think when everyone's forced to take a, this two week break or however long the quarantine lasts, they're going to see how pinged in that system they were, how imbalanced their body was. And that's really the biggest risk factor for getting sick stress. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so underplayed for immunity. <laughs> mm, I mean, I a hundred percent agree. And I think that this dis-ease had to happen. I think planet earth is behind it. You know, some people say it's the government. Some people say it's this, there's all these different theories. I honestly think it's the earth because the earth didn't want us to pollute her every day. Doesn't want us to take all these flights all around the world. We don't need to be flying all the time. Like, frankly, like, trust me, I used to fly all the time and I didn't realize the implications it had on the environment now that literally there are no flights between the U.S. and Europe right now. And I'm sure that, well, South America and other countries are now have just announced that Americans can't enter their country. So it's like global travel is shut down. And it's so beautiful. Like, I want to read this passage. I don't know if you heard it, but I'm going to read it to you. And it's just sure. about this. It says, yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. Mm. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of families around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number throughout the neighborhood so that elders may have someone to call upon. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that, yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be the dis-ease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how you live now. Today, breathe. Listen behind the factory noises of your panic. The birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul, and though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. And this is by Richard Hendrick in Ireland. Bravo. That's that's the way to found the silver lining right there. That's beautiful. So uh, it is amazing just seeing like the videos of the people in in Italy right now playing saxophone on their balconies to keep each other like company and and even the government <laughs> did like a little like air show or something for them. But it's, you know, I think that sometimes we get so overwhelmed by the issue, by the problem. We so focus on the problem mm -hmm. when like still to this day, you know, more, more people are dying from obesity. Wouldn't you say? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Metabolic syndrome, cancer. I mean, every day, you know, if you guys only knew how many people were passing away, even from medical error, which kills, this is the third highest um, killer in the nation actually medical air. So doctors. Wow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That is so crazy. And do you see this as kind of the shift in consciousness that is happening right now? I do. And you know, anytime there's a shift, it's not painless guys, you know, just like healing is not linear and not painless. It's also very painful for people to heal. When the body sees something it missed, it has this robust immune system to over to see it. And it creates chaos in the body. And out of chaos, we create order. And I think that's what's going on here. We're going to create order out of chaos and find the bright light and something better than what we had.
Mm. So how do you think in the future we can, you know, stay healthy without becoming germaphobes, without becoming human phobes, you know? Absolutely. So just remember, we're more bacteria than we are cells. So we just want to make sure we're made up of the right bacteria, right, that are protecting us, not the pathogenic ones. So, you know, what I want to leave people with is it seems that what's going on with coronavirus is that it's a robust TH1 part of the immune system, which means that you have a bunch of your immune cells, one side of your immune system is imbalanced, basically. So if you have autoimmunity, if you have some inflammatory conditions, food allergies, things, food sensitivities, things like that, you may be at a little bit higher risk. And so not much, but you know, this is one theory. So if that's the case, you guys really want to look at immune balancing supplements, right? You want to really want to look at things that balance both sides, TH1 and TH2 immunity. And that's things like colostrum or immunoglobulins, vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, green tea extracts, probiotics. You really want to look at things like ozone, which can actually kill the viral capsid, actually kills the virus. You know, other things, heat shock proteins. So this virus cannot withstand heat, guys. So infrared sauna, activating heat shock proteins, cold showers, things like that can really turn on the immune system in the proper way to kill the virus even Epsom salt baths. So, and really the most important thing, again, decreasing stress levels, you know, one minute of anger and stress decreases your immune system, guys. Gratitude, staying peaceful and grounded, finding beauty in even a chaotic situation will help calm the immune system. I mean, we've shown that you can decrease inflammation markers by having gratitude. So really take that in. It's, it matters what your thoughts are. Mm, So beautifully said. And I think it's so important for us, even though it is normal to be afraid, even though it's normal to be afraid of the unknown, I think we just need to fully feel into it and even ask ourselves, like, what is it that we are afraid of? You know, I went into a little bit of a fear spiral a couple days ago, and then I really asked myself, like, what is the thing that I'm so afraid of? And for me, it was the lack of food, potential lack of food. So I had to really think, well, okay, there's no way that I could starve because there's so much food on this planet that, like, I'm going to get it from like somewhere there's fruit trees I could go find, you know, I'm never going to starve. And, and it helped me to just like buy some things and and know that no matter what happened, I will be okay. For some people, it's the fear of getting the illness. For some people, they have a certain family member in mind. I think we have to identify the fear instead of just like, oh, I can't feel fear. I can't feel fear. It's too low vibe. Identify what it is, go into it. What is the worst case scenario? How will you overcome that? You know, I think I and a lot of people also have a fear of their parents getting it, you know, because our parents are in an older age. They, as much as we try, they don't necessarily take care of themselves and we feel helpless. And when something like this happens, it can really, you know, be a huge trigger for us. But even when I thought about that, I was like, if this is how they're meant to die, then what can I do about that? Me panicking over it can't help anything at this point. So all we can do is like, as the Buddha says, is just like accept life as it is and find the joy in it. And, you know, maybe this is the time that if your parents haven't really been awakened to healthy food, that you teach them how to cook and Mm -hmm. you teach them about why you should avoid sugar, why that may lower the immune system. And maybe this is the opportunity where you find the silver lining to educate them and they start listening about one little thing. Yes, I think a lot of people in the past couple of days have been really waking up to, for the first time, what was that thing you were telling me about, about like the green juice? What was that thing you told me about, about the whatever it is? And also like the farms aren't going to be shut down. It's not like the avocado trees are like, yo, quarantine, I'm out. (laughs) You know, like nature is never canceled. So no matter what happens, we're always going to have fresh food. And I think we have to like, remember that like, no matter what happens, even if it's like some guy in a weird, like plastic costume has to like come and deliver it, we're always going to have access to it. Earth is always going to be providing for us. And this is just a massive up leveling. I see this as like that energy of Kalima that burns the house to the ground. So the new energy can be rebuilt. And this is really the time that like all of the practices we did are being tested. Are they working for us? You know? Absolutely. Maybe you've been meditating every day. Like, how is it showing up for you? What are the practices that are moving you through this time? And this is how you can really see what it is that actually takes you from a panic state back into joy. I love it. Absolutely. I mean, that's how you, that's, that's alchemy. 
Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Yes. So any final words, advice you have for people out there to just stay healthy, stay as their highest selves in this time? You know, guys, it's really not this supplement or herb that you're going to take or this one magic bullet that's going to help prevent this thing, this horrible virus. It's, you know, it's not, don't look at it like that. You know, it's really your immune system. Your body is powerful. It's working for you every second of every day. Here's every thought that you hear, that you hear have in your head. And it really is fighting every single day. So thank your body. You know, it's 80% of your immune cell systems in your gut. So the things you put in your mouth really matter. And really take that into account. You know, it's important to know what ingredients, how they're processed in the body and how eating close to whole foods as earth can provide really helps our digestion. I really want you guys to think about invisible EMF that we may not see that can really penetrate our system and lower our immune system. So make sure you're turning Wi-Fi off at night, your hard wiring. And I want to ask about 5G. Yes. Because people are saying this is connected to 5G. I heard that too. I will say, here's the science on 5G. No one, there's probably less than a handful of people on earth who actually know what happened in Wuhan. And we will probably never really know what the root cause of this is, whether it was engineered or not, who knows, mutated to wild type in, in nature, we will never know. What we know now is with science of Wi-Fi and 5G, if you take a 2.5 gigahertz router and you place any sort of bacteria near it, especially E. coli or Listeria, they can get resistant to antibiotics around that router. They can actually grow outside the boundaries of the Petri dish where they're not supposed to. So what this is showing us is it affects the quorum sensing or the way the bacteria communicate in groups. And it also makes them not as uh, susceptible to certain antibiotics. So we're changing the pathogenesis of some bacteria. And we've also seen scientific experiments that show that mold can really, really grow around certain frequencies like Wi-Fi frequencies. And so, you know, all, not all EMF is created equal, but 5G is a much faster frequency. And in general, that can not, we don't know. There's not enough studies to tell us. So what we do know is that it is linked to autoimmunity. It is linked to oxidative damage, DNA damage, all that stuff. So, you know, you can imagine how this is creating some reactive oxygen species inflammation that we don't need in our bodies. So any way you guys can mitigate those effects by either hardwiring your internet with an ethernet cord, you can definitely ask your power company to take the smart meter out and opt out of that on your house. You can also put your plane on um, airplane mode anytime it's on your body or turn off your Wi-Fi at night. And that alone is some better than taking a host of supplements sometimes. You know, really reducing your stress levels, really making sure you're not using toxic household products, which are endocrine disruptors, which can lower your immunity, right? Over time. Because I'm this. confused because everyone's saying use bleach, use Clorox, use alcohol. <laughs> like I had to get normal soap for the first time because I don't own normal like alcohol, like soft soap or whatever that shit is. Yeah. But I have to get it because everyone's telling me it's the only way to, do we need these these chemicals? No, you know, you can get a hand sanitizer as long as, as, long as it's up to 70% alcohol. It's a, mostly mm -hmm. effective against the virus. So mm -hmm. you guys can just do that. Essential oils can have been shown to be really, really effective as well. You know, I would rather use something like Branch Basic. Can we use vodka? Because there's obviously no more hand sanitizer stuff <laughs> out there. Like all we have, I don't even drink from my husband, is vodka. He was yeah. like, just use this on your hands. I'm like, okay. I mean, it'll work. Yeah. If it's yeah. at least, you know, 70% alcohol, then yeah, it'll it'll definitely work, guys. I mean, this is how they cleaned in. They used alcohol as an antiseptic on wounds in like the 1800s, mm -hmm. right? Before they sewed right. people up. That's why. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I think it's time for us to get crafty because I think <laughs> hand sanitizer is like worth more than gold right now. Yeah. You guys, if we were in the wrong business, I'm telling you, <laughs> hand sanitizer. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your advice. So do you see this situation clearing up? Like what, like what is your guesstimate of how long it could take? I honestly feel like that the, the government is being extra conservative because they think they can curb this so much. I don't think that the actual fallout from the virus is, is going to be nearly as bad as what we even saw from the other respiratory viruses a decade or 20 years ago. So I actually feel like that this is, this is not going to be 
as bad as we think. There's going to be a few people, elderly people or people with comorbidities and God bless Olivia's parents. That's just terrible. So, you know, they're going to be people like that, that we hear it's going to, they're going to rattle us and it's not going to be fair. And it's, it is maybe going to be some of those people's, the elderly people nursing home their time then. And we will see it just like we do every year with the flu. I don't think it's going to be as bad as some of the flu years. I don't think it's going to be as bad as H1N1, but you know, stranger things have happened. I may have to eat my words later, but that's my gut intuition. Mm. And so many people are recovering from it. You know, yes. like most people are, I mean, 97% of people are recovering from it, right? If the, if the rate is 3%. And I was reading that even the youngest person ever who died from it was like almost 40 years old and a man in China and that it is two times more likely to be on men than it is on women. It's true. That's very true. And we think, we don't know, but we think that's because the receptor that this virus binds to to get in the cells is known as the ACE2 receptor, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor. And they think that there might be a genetic mutation where this is only an X-linked trait. Okay. So it's only women carry it on the X chromosome, right? So since women have two X chromosomes, they wouldn't, they would have an extra one that might be normal, right? But men only get one X chromosome. So they're more affected by this genetic mutation. If they get it, then they have it and they, that might they may be more susceptible to the virus binding easier to them. Also, as people get older, their testosterone decreases, especially men. We've also shown that the virus may have more affinity for the receptor if testosterone decreases. So there are a number of different theories as to why this could be happening. Mm, okay. And what do you think about colloidal silver? I love colloidal silver in general. I don't think there's been a lot of direct studies on colloidal silver against coronavirus. I think that what I would go with more than, with than colloidal silver right now, even though I like it, is probably hydrogen peroxide baths. And that's because that's made in the your cells naturally to kill all viruses and bacteria. And it's what... You put it in your bath water? Yeah, you How can, much? You can, you can start with three to four capfuls and work up to almost eight capfuls. We do it with our Gerson therapy patients who have cancer and everything because that's what ozone turns into in the body is hydrogen peroxide. And it preferentially goes after disease cells. So, mm. yeah. And I also heard that licorice mm -hmm. helps prevent the virus from binding. Yeah, I've heard this as well about licorice. There's some caution with licorice. I definitely talk to everyone's practitioner and don't take this as medical advice, but licorice can also raise blood pressure. So it's very interesting since this ACE receptor, the virus binds to helps control the dilation of blood vessels and therefore blood pressure. And licorice also can raise blood pressure. So you can see sort of a direct correlation as to how that might work against the virus. Mm. Yeah, I'm definitely taking ginger, colloidal silver, oil of oregano, just like all of the antiviral, anti, you know, the things that I would take for candida, I'm like taking <laughs> again. And I think that it's a good just reminder for us all to like keep our immune systems high and remember like we live in this bacteria world. And I just don't want it to make people be afraid of bacteria and afraid of each other because we also do need bacteria to like build our immunities up. Yeah, we do. And you know, this, this is, this is why there's not a good reason to kill this because, you know, we don't have an antibacterial because it's a virus, you know, but if you're bacteria, it's the best immune defense. So if you have a good gut system and a good bacterial system that makes it up, then you have a good immune system, right? To fight even against a virus. But viruses are hard. We don't have a, a lot of good answers for the cold, for the flu, for HIV, for any of that stuff, right? And so this is the reason this one's so different is just because it jumped from an animal so quickly to people and our immune systems have never seen it before. It's always been in mammals or animals, right? So it's mm. sort of a shock to our system to see something like this that's completely drifted or shifted, excuse me, from its from something that we've never seen before. And it's always been an animal. So our body is kind of ill-prepared when something like that happens. So interesting that, you know, it came from a bat, as we now know. Right. So 
do bats commonly have this disease and it was because they were eating it or was that bat injected with the disease So because we, they were studying on it? If, I've heard both things. I think it could be both things. I have, yeah. you know, I have, I don't know if we'll ever know the answer to that. The one thing I do know though, is that bats don't have a really robust um, TH1 immune system. So the virus can live in them without them mounting this huge immune response that produces all this mucus and, you know, all the stuff that everyone's experiencing. So the, they can have kind of live with the virus without even knowing actually. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it kind of reminds me of like mad cow disease, right? I think like yes. there's always some risk of eating another animal because we don't know the kinds of diseases that that animal may carry and not show symptoms against. Yeah. We're all vectors for something, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. True story. Love it. So we're going to take our, our hydrogen peroxide, <laughs> Epsom salt bath, <laughs> lots of vitamin C. I've heard that yes. in South Korea, they're really using vitamin C. What's the best way to take that? Like obviously eating, you know, citruses, what do you recommend is the best? So, you know, in times like this, what I tell people is if you have any like gut function, if your gut is not, is hindered, you don't absorb as well as you'd like to, you're always bloated, you don't have normal bowel movements, you might consider going to a clinic for like a vitamin C IV, right? To bypass the gut barrier. That's really great. And you can guarantee it's been absorbed into your system. However, if you can't do that and you have good gut function, consider things like liposomal vitamin C, a lot of citrus, organic red peppers have even more vitamin C than an orange. So that's a really great way to get, you know, organic good. red pepper, you said? Yes. Organic red okay. pepper, red bell pepper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that, guys, look at the really colorful fruits. They have a lot of antioxidants like vitamin C, things like you know, all the citrus, like you just mentioned, Sahara, or lycopene in tomatoes and red bell peppers as well. Um, eat amla traditionally has the highest vitamin C of any fruit. So mm, amla is so good, guys. Amla is this like Indian fruit that's super, super sour. It comes in these little balls. I used to eat them back in India, but now, I mean, it, it, they always have had these like dried amla. It's like an Ayurvedic medicine. Yes. And it's really just this dried version of this fruit. And it's so good. It's like very detoxifying, vitamin C, all of the things. So look up amla. Yeah. Food is medicine, guys. Seriously. And so that's really, you can find whole food supplements that actually have amla in it that are trying to replicate the beautiful aspects of amla there. So, you know, really look into things like that. Vitamin C is a great TH1 and TH2 immune balancer. So it's one of the ones I mentioned earlier because of that, it's a wonderful antioxidant. Mm. Yeah. And also sweating. Yes. Absolutely, guys. This, this virus, we think this is really interesting. If you'll notice a lot of the places where it's more lethal or I won't say lethal, but a little more virulent and it's a little more populous are actually northern hemisphere countries. And that's because it can really replicate in colder climates as, as opposed to more temperate climates um, near the equator, which is unusual. And it is not um, heat resistant. It is very heat sensitive. So really, they think that as the warmer months start to progress, um, the virus will fall by the wayside. Um, it remains to be seen, though, how much more it will come back in later winter months. It may be with us forever now, and our immune system will have to adapt, right? We don't know yet. But yeah, just so you guys know, if you have a sauna or you have access to a sauna, depending on what happens with the quarantine, activating, look up how to activate heat shock proteins. Intermittent fasting can do it. Autophagy, or that's um, heat shock proteins or self-digestion of even energy. just wor working out that kind of sweat, right? It's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Anytime you have acute stress on the body, the body has this robust Im immune reaction to reset everything. And that's the way to do it. Heat shock proteins. So... Yep. I have been ever since I, I moved out here because I don't live in the city anymore, but I do these just workouts every day on YouTube. I just like look up a new workout every day mm. and it's so good because I get to be at home and work out. So even now that like everything is closed, I still get to like completely sweat every day. I'll do hit, I'll do boxing, I'll do dance. So I really want to invite people like you don't need a sauna, you don't need anything to sweat. You could just play a YouTube video and work out at your house right now. Absolutely. And that's what I tell people all the time. If you have the privilege and honor of moving your body, 
it's a privilege. Like you should be doing that every day. There are people who can't do that and would love to be able to do that every day. So really, if you can stay in that gratitude of being able to just move your body and you honor that by moving it every day, then that's what everyone asks me, how, how long should I sweat, Dr. Jess? And I'm like, you should sweat every day. You're made to sweat every day. <laughs> Yeah. I think people feel like, oh, well, I don't want to get sick. So I don't want to exercise too much, but it's the opposite. Exercise builds your immune system. Yeah. Unless you are so wiped out that you can, your like chronic fatigue, exhaustion, it's hard for you to get out of bed. Then that's something different guys. But yes, if you have energy, if you're, if you're healthy, you sh absolutely, it's great every day and it will ward off things like a virus for most people. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And even if you're like, well, I don't want to get out of bed. Like every morning I always <laughs> tell myself at the beginning, like, you know, I'm just going to do Pilates. I'm just going to do something really easy on the floor where I can lie down. And as soon as I start doing that, I build the energy, I create the energy. So it's like the <laughs> more you exercise, the more energy you'll have. It's not wait until you have energy and then exercise. Granted, you don't have chronic fatigue. You don't have like an actual disease that's preventing you from it. Yeah. But I think most of us like think we're so fragile and we can't exercise. Whereas like now your schedule is cleared y'all. It's time to work out. Like you can, you can <laughs> spend your time doing those planks, those pushups, those squats, the wall sits, it's all free and you don't need any equipment for it. No excuses, everyone. That's right. <laughs> no excuses. Mm. So really it's a time for you guys to get right with yourself. It is. It's a time to get right, to look at, to plan out your future, what you want your life to look like how you want the world to be different, how we can manifest healthcare to be a better healthcare system. This is a way to really t put a pause and, and pump the brakes on everything we've been full speed ahead at and, and just reevaluate. And so if you guys can stay in that moment of gratitude, your immune system will thank you. I think that the panic and fear we create in our head is always worse than the real thing. And when the real thing happens, we can't prepare for it. Most of us are unprepared. It catches us by surprise and we act accordingly in the moment, right? Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. And and we have to remember that this is all happening for us. I really believe the healthcare system is going to be different after this. I think the student loans, I mean, they've already, they're already um, forgiving a lot of student loan debts and removing interest on them and lowering interest rates on homes and all of these things like our entire economy is going to shift for the better after this, because essentially what's happening is a great clearing and all systems that are not serving us in the highest alignment are breaking to the ground. And I mean, mega corporations are being hit for the very first time. And right now it may feel really hard, especially if you're a small business owner, especially if you work in the service or hospitality industry, but it's all creating a better future, right? Like our ancestors didn't know when they couldn't use like, I don't know, stones for their house anymore that like there was something better waiting for them. So we just have to trust that the universe is always supporting us. And what is waiting for us is better than anything that we can even fathom right now. Absolutely. I love that. So yeah, you guys stay well and stay healthy and stay positive. Yes, absolutely. Amen. Aho, where can <laughs> listeners connect with you, watch all your videos? You have so much good stuff, especially on mold, autoimmune, hormones, all the things. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So if you guys want to look me up on social media, it's Dr. Period Jess, period MD. I have a uh, education uh, courses and all about hidden infections and immunity and all that stuff up on education.dr.dr jessicapetros.com. And then my new website will be launching soon, drjessmd.com. And you guys can also find me on YouTube at Dr. D-O-C-T-O-R, Jess MD. Mm, guys, she is the best. She really breaks things down. She was able to heal her boyfriend from all of this like mold and lime too. Yeah. Like yeah. a bunch of different things happening at once and really is like a true miracle worker. <laughs> thank you so much. You, thank you. Thank you. I'm always pleased to help everyone. So, mm, well, thank you for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks guys. Mm, so much great advice, great wisdom, and great insight. It's really important for us to know what is happening from a cellular level, from a scientific perspective. It's really easy for us to just like bypass what is going on. But when we really dive into the science of it, we see that, yes, it's extremely important for us to self-quarantining. And also, we don't have to be so afraid. You know, the chances of us getting it are extremely low, and the chances of us recovering from it 
even if we do get it in that our chance are extremely high. So we are safe. We are protected. We are healed. We are whole. And we can still know about the science. We don't have to be afraid of it. You know, being afraid of facts just shows that we aren't really truly anchored into our spiritual belief. Because if we're anchored into our spiritual belief, we can know the facts. We can know that this is a virus and it's contagious and lives are being affected. And we can be responsible citizens and decide how are we going to walk forward knowing what is out there. So all of you who listen, I really admire you and your your desire to want to know about the science of it, to be able to protect and educate others. Please share this episode with anyone out there that is confused. What is this virus all about? Maybe they're getting misinformation from the internet. Maybe they're just completely fear-based. They think everyone's going to get it. We don't know everything, but I think it's a really good place to start with what we do know and then build from there. So share this episode with anyone that you feel like could really benefit from it right now. Anyone who's in a lot of fear, anyone who really needs science to understand something, this could really open up their perspective and allow them to see there's really nothing to be afraid of and self-quarantine. You can do both at the same time. So thank you so much to Dr. Jess for being on the podcast. Be sure to connect with her at dr.jess.md. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Namaste. 